Thank you for listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast, where we discuss all the news in the world of basketball, NBA, college, high school, whatever it may be. My name is Ben Brown. I'd like to thank you once again for joining us here today on a Wednesday, talking all things basketball here at the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. We have a lot to discuss today. Big, big storylines coming out of the NBA from last night including the Golden State Warriors. Kevin Durant is injured. He's got a knee injury. He's going to be out at least four weeks. We'll talk about that and recap what happened really last night in the game. The Wizards played the Warriors. The Wizards actually came out on top 112 to 108 in this game. Durant gets injured a minute and a half into the game. Okay, here's the irony of this whole situation. This is why sports is fantastic. What is the big joke about the Golden State Warriors? It's that they blew a 3-1 lead. What is today? Today is March 1st, the third month of the year and the first day of the month. So today is 3-1-2017. The Golden State Warriors have 3.1 million followers on Twitter. Kevin Durant is playing in his hometown against the Wizards against his former head coach in Scott Brooks, and Kevin Durant blew a 3-1 lead to the Warriors with the Thunder in the Western Conference Finals. And Kevin Durant gets injured last night. I mean, this is why I love sports, seriously. Like, the irony of that whole situation is just laughable. So what happened a minute and a half into the game, Marcin Gortat basically threw Zaza Pachulia to the ground, Zaza Pachulia going down, runs in to Kevin Durant. Durant was trying to get out of the way, so he had his right leg up in the air. So all his pressure is on his left leg, and Pachulia's head runs right in to Durant's knee. He hyperextends his knee. He tried to basically run it off, but then he quickly realized, like, yeah, this is not going to work. So he didn't play the rest of the game. He got an MRI that night. The results came out earlier. I'd say about an hour ago from now they came out. He has a grade 2 MCL sprain and a tibial bone bruise. He's going to be out at least four weeks and then reevaluated after that. So when you're looking at the NBA calendar, today's, of course, March 1st. As I mentioned, the playoffs start March, or I'm sorry, April 15th. So we'll call that six weeks. So he's going to be out practically the whole month of March at least. And then you have a couple of weeks until the playoffs start. Well, what I would do with KD is honestly, I'd probably keep him out five weeks. I think you need to get him ready for the playoffs because the Warriors, they'll be okay. I mean, they're four games ahead of the Spurs right now. They did not have Durant last year, but this is not the same team this year. They don't have Bogut. They don't have Harrison Barnes. They don't have some of that depth off the bench. People like Festus Azili, Leandro Barbosa. They had to lose those pieces in order to acquire Durant and the contract he's on. So they're not the same team they were last year, but they still have three all-stars, Clay, Steph, and Draymond Green. Still have a great coach in Steve Kerr, and they're 50-10. and 10. They have a four-game lead over the Spurs in the Western Conference, so they'll still be in a really good situation. So I'd probably keep Durant out at least five weeks. You want to get him at least ready, healthy, and up to speed for that playoff push for the first round, which right now looks like it's going to be either the Denver Nuggets Maybe the Sacramento Kings, although they don't have Boogie Cousins. Portland's only two and a half games back, so there's a chance there with Damian Lillard and C.J. McCollum and company. But it looks like it's probably going to be Denver. So you want to get him at least ready for the first round of the playoffs because they're not going to need Durant to beat Denver. But in that second round, you could be looking at maybe playing a team like Utah or even the Clippers if they get healthy and get everything going. They could be a tough threat to you. And then you have the conference finals, maybe the Spurs or the Rockets. That could be kind of dangerous as well. So they're going to need to get Durant healthy and up to speed because I really don't think without him they can win the NBA championship. I don't see them beating Cleveland with the additions of Bogut and Darren Williams, which are going to happen. I don't see that happening without Durant. So they're going to need him ready and up to speed because I don't see how they win without him. Point blank, period. Durant's not been injured that much in his career, but he did miss some time a few years back with the leg injury with the Thunder. Looks like, looks like he was going to come back then, and then, oh, wait, I need more time. So 
He's a guy that doesn't really heal from his injuries too quickly, so you maybe want to give him a little more time anyways. But at least get him healthy, ready and up to speed. And I think the Warriors will be okay. He's going to be reevaluated in four weeks, so it's not too bad. I mean, if he was out for the rest of the season, I think you would call it done. You had to expect he would miss some time. So it, it's not great. I mean, it's not time to panic either. So I think the Warriors will be okay. But they did lose last night. They're now 15-10 on the season. The Wizards pick up the win. They're 35-23. and They win by 4, 112-108. to Markeith Morris had a really good game. He had 22.6 rebounds. John Wall had 19 assists in the game. So, I mean, he's really flourishing this season as a more of a true point guard as opposed to a scoring guard. So the Wizards are looking really, really good right now. In overtime, the Detroit Pistons defeated the Portland Trailblazers 120-113. to Markeith's twin brother, Marcus Morris, had a fantastic game for Detroit. He had 37 points, 8 rebounds, and 6 assists. Damian Lillard in the loss was 1 assist shy of a triple-double. He had 34 points, 11 rebounds, and 9 assists. The Denver Nuggets pick up a big win as they look to get to the postseason. As I, as I said, they're currently the eighth seed right now. Nikola Jokic is having by far probably the best season of any big man within the last month, month and a half. Just a really, really surprising season. He had a triple-double last night. He had 19 points, 16 rebounds, and 10 assists. Rajon Rondo in the loss had 19 points, 5 assists, and 4 rebounds for the Bulls. The Memphis Grizzlies pick up a 130-112 to win over the Phoenix Suns. Marcus Gasol had 28 points, 7 rebounds, and 5 assists. Eric Bledsoe had 20 points, 8 assists, and 5 boards in the loss for Phoenix. The Thunder, I mean, Russell Westbrook, I don't know what else I could say about the guy that hasn't been said already. He did it again last night, his 30th triple-double of the season. 43 points, 11 rebounds, 10 assists. In the 109 to 106 victory over the Utah Jazz, it's his eighth triple double where he scores at least 40 points. Doug McDermott chipped in off the bench with 16 points. Ennis Cantor's been playing well since returning from injury. He, of course, missed time because he decided to just punch the chair and break his arm. So, not the smartest move there, but he's done well since coming back off the bench. The Thunder are playing really well, and it's Westbrook who's entirely carrying them. If he averages a triple-double, you have to give him the MVP award. I would still lean towards Harden, but if he averages a triple-double, I'd go with Westbrook, which, honestly, I think he can do. He's got 30 of them right now. I believe Oscar Robertson had 41 this season. He averaged a triple-double. Westbrook's definitely on pace to do so. I think it's probably going to happen, barring injury. But I think Westbrook's definitely going to win the MVP if he does average that triple-double. And he's leading his team single-handedly. They're 35-25. and 25. They're 7th in the Western Conference. They're only a couple of games out of 4th, too. So there's a chance that they could even move up without Kevin Durant, simply just Westbrook. I mean, that would be absolutely fantastic how he's just absolutely carrying them. The Hornets pick up a road win over the Los Angeles Lakers last night, 109-104. to All-star, All-star guard Kemba Walker had 30.7 assists and 5 rebounds. Julius Randle had a great game for the Lakers. He had 23 points, 18 rebounds, and 6 assists in the loss. The Hornets improve to 26 and 34, and the Lakers finish at 19 and 42 and guarantee themselves their fourth season in a row with a losing record. So, I mean, they have in Magic Johnson now. It's going to take some time. He's going to try and recruit some pieces, one of them probably being Paul George, who seemed like at the deadline he wanted to go to L.A., but has not gone there, did not get traded. And honestly, I see a little bit of frustration in Paul George. The way he's been playing recently, he got ejected on Saturday for getting his second technical foul in a game. He didn't score over 20 points for, I believe, four games in a row. So he's kind of going through a little bit of a slump, and I feel like that's a little bit of uh, frustration setting in because he really wants to go to L.A., and he did not get traded. So that's a possibility starting maybe next season at the draft, possibly the summer. Paul George could be moving elsewhere, and L.A. is definitely one option that he wants to go to and would be a nice piece. He's from there, so it's, it's possible. Today is March 1st. Talking about the games tonight, the Knicks will be on the road taking on the Magic. The Wizards will be taking on the Kyle Lowry less Raptors. Of course, Lowry's going to be out at least until the playoffs with the injury there in the hand. The Mavericks will be taking on the Hawks in Atlanta. 
The 76ers without Joel Embiid will be taking on the Miami Heat. I feel like the Sixers are kind of just tanking the rest of the season, trying to get a better draft pick. If they finish with a better record than the Kings, they will swap picks with them. But, of course, they want to try and get as as best of a draft pick as they can. They're still going through that rebuilding mode, although Embiid's fantastic if he's healthy. He, of course, has missed a lot of time recently with another foot injury, and Ben Simmons is going to be out the rest of the year with the foot injury himself. So Sixers still in that tanking mode, at least for the rest of the season, but I do like what they're doing there. The Denver Nuggets will be on the road taking on Giannis and Ted Akumbo and the Milwaukee Bucks. The Detroit Pistons will be taking on the New Orleans Pelicans. Have to see if Anthony Davis and Boogie Cousins can get their first win of the season together. The Cleveland Cavaliers will take on the Boston Celtics. That'll be a great game tonight, number one and number two, respectively, in the Eastern Conference there. The Indiana Pacers will take on the San Antonio Spurs. The Minnesota Timberwolves will be on the road taking on the Utah Jazz. The Houston Rockets are in L.A. to take on the Clippers. And quite honestly... I could say maybe the worst two rosters in the league at this time are playing tonight, and that is the 9-49 and 49 Brooklyn Nets in Sacramento to take on the 25-35 and 35 Kings at the Golden 1 Center. So those are your games tonight in the NBA. Of course, the big storylines, Kevin Durant and the, the Warriors. He's going to be out again, as I mentioned, four weeks. He's got a grade 2 MCL sprain and a tibial bone bruise. He'll be reevaluated in four weeks. We'll take our first break of the show. After the break, we're going to talk about college basketball re- results from the top 25 last night. And we'll do something a little different. We'll talk some bubble watch. Conference tournaments are scheduled to start really, really soon. Let's see which teams need to really prove themselves in the conference championships there. See if they can get in the tournament, what work they need to be done, looking at some resumes of some schools that are on the bubble to get into the NCAA tournament here at the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Thank you for returning back to the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. We are shifting gears. We're going to talk about college basketball. Results in the top 25 last night. Games tonight and the bubble teams. What does it look like for their chances of getting into the tournaments right now? And what work can be done as they get towards the conference championship tournament? All right, so let's start off here. We're talking about the SEC. Number nine, Kentucky hosted Vanderbilt last night. Was their senior night. Kentucky got off to a bad start. They were down 30-24 to at halftime over Vanderbilt. But they played really good in the second half, led by freshman Malik Monk. Of course, he had 27 points last night. Huge game over the weekend against Florida. They went 73-67 to over Vanderbilt. Kentucky now 25-5 and 15-2 and in the SEC, really looking like they're going to win another regular season SEC championship. But Florida is lurking. Florida will be in action tonight. Number 17, Duke hosted number 15, Florida State, and they get the win without Grayson Allen, 75-70. to Emil Jefferson had 14 points and 11 rebounds for Duke. Number 16, Purdue with the win last night over Indiana, clinches a share of the Big Ten Championship. They defeat the Hoosiers 86-75. to Caleb Swanigan had 21 points and 10 rebounds in the win. Purdue now 24-6 and 13-4 and in conference play. Number 24, Iowa State defeated unranked Oklahoma State, 86-83. Matt Thomas for the Cyclones had 25 points, 5 assists, and 3 rebounds in the victory there. Iowa State now 20-9 overall. 
I mentioned Florida. They will be in action tonight against unranked Arkansas. Arkansas is still a really good team at 22 and 7, 11 and 5 overall in conference. Florida 23 and 6, 13 and 3 in the SEC. Number 19, Notre Dame will be hosting Boston College. Number 8, Louisville. They will be on the road taking on Wake Forest. And Lonzo Ball, TJ Leaf, I don't know, I can name a million people with UCLA. Bryce Alford and company will be hosting unranked Washington. It looks like Markel Fultz will not be playing in this game. So Washington, who are 9-19 and 2-14 and and in conference play with Fultz, who's averaging 23 points, practically 6 assists and 6 rebounds. Even with him, it would be a tough contest. And I'd love to see that game. Potentially the number one and number two picks in the draft this summer in Lonzo Ball and Markel Fultz battling it off there. But it looks like Fultz is not going to be playing in this game. He is injured. So UCLA, who's number three in the nation now, should be rolling along against Washington tonight at the Poly Pavilion. So now let's look at some teams on the bubble. Okay, so conference tournaments are are fastly approaching for a lot of the mid-major schools that are currently going on this week. So... Of course, you have to look at now the bubble teams, those teams that are maybe on the radar that potentially have some work left to do, teams that should be able to get in. So let's look at some of the popular and trendy teams on the bubble, okay? So I don't think you can look any farther than teams in the Big Ten like Michigan State and potentially Northwestern. Michigan State... Have been in the conference cha- or been in the NCAA tournament. I'm sorry, 19 years in a row now. When you're looking at their resume this year, they're 18 and 11. They're 10 and 6 in the Big Ten. They have an RPI of 40, and they have a strength of schedule of 12. I'm sorry, 14, not 12. Illinois is 12. So, Michigan State have a strength of schedule of 14. So, they played a lot of tough teams. They had to deal with some injuries. They did just defeat Wisconsin over the weekend, which was a huge, huge win for their resume. That one stamp on it to really give them a a quality win here. But for me, when I look at Michigan State, I realize they've been here 19 years in a row now. Legendary coach in Tom Izzo. It seems like the Spartans seem to be sort of lurking around the middle part of the season and really hit their stride at the end of the season and make deep postseason runs. But quite honestly, I don't see it happening this year. They're just not really a good team. And I mean, they've dealt with a lot of injuries. They've been up and down all year. I hope the committee doesn't just put them in because of who they are. I mean, it is Michigan State after all. They have been fantastic. Their RPI is 40. So you're looking at at at-large teams. You have 37 of them, I believe. So depending on how conference championship goes. Of course, if they win it, then they're in automatically. They get the automatic bid. But I I think they have a lot of work left to do. Another team being Illinois as well. They have a string schedule of 12, RPI of 56. But they're 7-9 in conference. They're 17-12 overall. Michigan State are in a much better position than they are. And really, the one team I really, really want to get in from the Big Ten is Northwestern. They're 20 and 9 overall. They are only 9 and 7 in the Big Ten, so they are kind of struggling in conference play. Their strength of schedule is not that great. It's 76. Their RPI is 50. But the Northwestern Wildcats have never in school history been in the big dance. So it would be fantastic if they were able to get in. I would love to see them in the big dance, at least this year. They've never been there. That'd be fantastic to see them get in. And quite honestly, I hope they do get in. That'd be great for the school and the program itself. Looking at the Pac-12, I mean, Oregon, UCLA, and Arizona are, of course, the locks. A couple of teams that definitely need to do some work are USC. They're 21-8 and overall, but they're only 8-8 eight and eight in the Pac-12 play. So UCLA, I'm sorry, USC was unbeaten outside of conference. And I think that's in due part to their 62nd overall strength of schedule. Their RPI is 36 But USC not really doing good in the Pac-12. And the Pac-12 is not really deep. Oregon, Arizona, and UCLA are fantastic. Cal's okay. They have a lot of room to do as well. They need to make a deep run in the tournament as well. In the Pac-12 tournament, that is, to really get in. But they're not really all that great in the Pac-12 as far as basketball is concerned this season. So, for for USC, I think they're probably going to be left out. They're really, really close. But they need to maybe win at least a couple of games in the Pac-12 tournament if they want to get in. 
By far the best conference this season has been the ACC. When you're looking at some of the locks for the tournament, I mean, you're looking at North Carolina, Louisville, Duke, Miami. They've been playing great recently. They're ranked again. Virginia, Notre Dame, Florida State. I mean, they could potentially see at least seven, eight teams get into the tournament. I mean, Virginia Tech is 21-8 overall and 10-7 and in the ACC Wake Forest has a lot of room to do. Syracuse is on the bubble as well. I don't think they'll get in. But I think what Virginia Tech have the best chance to get in from the ACC. That's not a team that's going to be a lock. So you could see potentially eight teams get in from the ACC. That would be fantastic for the conference and for a lot of these schools. And you're looking at some of these mid-majors here who could potentially not get in if they don't win their conference tournaments Potentially a team like Wichita State. They're 27-4 overall. They're 17-1 in conference play. The problem is their strength of schedule. They have a strength of schedule of, yes, 190. Wichita State Shockers' strength of schedule is 190. They simply don't have a win over anyone that is good. So if they don't win their conference championship, then they could be left outside for a team who could be potentially... Let's say if they win a couple of games, 29-5 overall. I mean, if they don't win it all, that's that's going to be tough for them to do. But given their history, they have an RPI of 41, which is pretty good. And given Wichita State's history, they should be able to win their conference championship game and get in. But things are kind of left up in the air, and who really knows exactly what's going to happen there. So it's going to be really interesting going down here. I love the NCAA tournament. I mentioned it before on the show. It's by far my my most interesting and most fun event to watch in all of sports because of the uncertainty. Those couple of weeks are just fantastic. It's a one game season. Every time every team goes out there on the floor, upsets galore, the mid majors, the Cinderella is making deep runs in the tournament. It's fantastic. It's by far the most exciting thing in sports. And I'm definitely looking forward to selection Sunday, a couple of weeks away now. So we will take our last break of the show. After the break, we're going to talk about news in basketball. What are the Warriors going to do now that Kevin Durant is out for a while? They do have a backup plan in mind. Brandon Jennings, who was cut by the Knicks on Monday, he has a new home. Who is that team? And the Denver Nuggets are going to have to fight for the eighth seed in the West without one of their big men that they rely on heavily. We'll talk about that news and more right after the break here at the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines. They got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back into the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. The Warriors are moving on without Kevin Durant for at least the next four weeks. And they have an option in mind to at least fill the need for the time being. And that's recent free agent Matt Barnes. He was, of course, waived by the Kings during the whole Boogie Cousins trade saga because they had to free up space to bring in the three new players they were acquiring. So Matt Barnes, of course, is a free agent. He is going to sign with the Warriors in wake of the Kevin Durant injury. I saw this last night on the internet, on the web, and I knew that if the Warriors were bringing in Matt Barnes, that the Kevin Durant injury was not a minor thing. Not that necessarily that it wasn't serious, because I really don't think this is serious. He's going to be probably back for the playoffs. But I knew that bringing in Matt Barnes showed me that the Warriors were at least a little concerned with Kevin Durant and his injury. And you know what? Matt Barnes is not a bad player. He's a guy who's played with the Warriors before. And he said, quote, he's ready to start it back where it all began, which is kind of confusing to me because, I mean, he's from Sacramento, so you'd imagine he would be calling Sacramento his home. But he said, I'm coming back to help finish what I started. And 
maybe something about what happened in 2007 because he was a member of the team back then. And he said, this is the happiest day of my life. Well, yeah, because you're going back to the Warriors. You have a chance to win a title as opposed to the Kings where you didn't really have any chance at all to win. He's 36 years old. He's going to be signed for the rest of the season. So it's not a bad move. Matt Barnes is a guy who can contribute, a good defender, not a bad shooter. The only problem with him is he's kind of a little bit of a hothead, a little bit of an off-the-court distraction. But with that being said, I'm sure he would get along great with Draymond Green then because, uh, yeah, he's going back to Oakland, going back to the Golden State Warriors to fill in on at least a short-term notice rest of the season to replace what Kevin Durant is going to try and bring to the table because he's going to be out for the next four weeks. So the team which Kevin Durant got injured to was the Washington Wizards. The Wizards have acquired a new backup themselves. Brandon Jennings, he reached a verbal agreement to sign with the Wizards. Of course, Jennings was waived by the New York Knicks on Monday because, I mean, simply the Knicks are just going in a new direction. They're trying to get rid of a lot of people. And the Wizards are going to be moving on past Trey Burke, who was their backup point guard. The young man came out of Michigan. He got drafted by the Jazz. And he just simply hasn't really played well. He's had to deal with some injuries as well. So they are going to be moving on with Brandon Jennings as their point guard. During his time with the Knicks, Jennings averaged 8.6 points per game. And a team high, yes, a team high, which is this is kind of scary to think. But 4.9 assists. A team high, which is pretty low. But anyways, he was averaging about five assists with the Knicks off the bench, playing about 25 minutes a game. He's also shooting 34% from three, which isn't great, but isn't terrible at the same time. So for Washington, as far as bringing in Brandon Jennings as their backup point guard, I think this is a very, very good move. I think Jennings is probably going to become already one of the better backup point guards in the NBA. I say he's more of a true point guard as opposed to a scoring guy. Eight points, five assists. If he can average that off the bench in Washington, then I think that will be great because John Wall's playing a lot of minutes, and of course he's young and he's a fantastic player. He's an all-star. So he's going to play a lot of minutes, but if Jennings can even maybe chip in kind of like what Darren Williams is going to do with the Cavaliers, 15 to 20 minutes, maybe provide six, seven points, three or four assists, Give John Wall some extra rest. That would be fantastic. You look at the Wizards. I really, really like what they're doing. They're 35-23. and They're six games back of Cleveland. Only two games back of Boston. I would imagine the Toronto Raptors will take a hit without Kyle Lowry now. So that puts the Wizards, in my eyes at least, at worst, the third seed in the Eastern Conference. And now with the addition of Brandon Jennings at backup point guard, I think that's a good move. I think they could even challenge Boston for that number two seed. I don't think they'll catch Cleveland, even though Kevin Love is out. But I think this is a really good move. They have a great backcourt with Bradley Beal and John Wall. Otto Porter Jr. is having a breakout season. Leads the NBA in three-point percentage. And they have just really a solid, good young core. So I think the addition of Brandon Jennings is a good one for Washington because he gives them more depth. He's a guy who started over his career. He's been in the league for a while now, and this is already his fifth team, so he knows what it takes to sort of work into a new system and succeed. So I think this is a really, really good move for the Wizards, and I I like the decision that they're going with here. And then real quick, before we end the show here at the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast, the Denver Nuggets are going to have to compete for the eighth seed without Kenneth Fareed for the time being. He's got some back spasms, and reports are he's going to be sidelined for at least one week With an injury like the back, especially with spasms, they kind of go on and off really often. So you can't really gauge exactly how far or how long someone's going to be out because they could be feeling great one day and then the next day your back could just be feeling terribly. So it's hard to really gauge that. It's also an injury where something could be reoccurring. Fareed's really having a disappointing season. He's having a career low average in points per game at 9.7. So he's averaging only about 10 points a game right now. But you know what? Denver has a lot of solid big men. Nikola Jokic, who we talked about earlier, had triple-double last night. And he's having a breakout season. They brought in Mason Plumley in a trade from Portland. And he's a nice, solid big man who gives them more depth. So they can be a little patient in my eyes as far as Fareed is concerned. Because the ceiling for this team is really the 8th seed. 
when you look at the difference between seven Oklahoma City and eight Denver, it's an eight point different or eight game difference. Sorry. So there's no way that Denver's going to catch the OKC Thunder. So at best, they're looking at the eighth seed. I think Sacramento will take a dip because they're just simply not a better team with Boogie Cousins not on the floor now. The Trailblazers are two and a half back. The Dallas Mavericks are two and a half back. And the Minnesota Timberwolves are three back. So I think Denver's still the best of those four teams there. And they should still be able to get the eighth seed. They have a nice core. They score a lot of points. I mean, they're averaging 110 points per game. So I think they'll be okay without Fareed. They can be patient with him, get his back really healthy because they have some bigs, and then maybe push for that playoff spot, which would be great, although they're probably going to get swept by the Golden State Warriors. So, I mean, that's going to end the show for today. I'd like to thank you guys again for listening. My name is Ben Brown here at the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. We are signing off on the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. We will back be back in the studio tomorrow. Pauline will be recording, and we will see you guys then. Have a good day. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program